Hello, everybody. How's it going today? Happy Saturday afternoon. We are here, and I'm super excited to be here with all of you sharing this uh, really monumental event. So uh, for starters, I'm Brad. I am the uh, host of the Friends of the Force podcast. And I am Sarah, and I also sometimes host on Friends of the Force podcast. And I'm just here. I'm just here for the fun times. Yeah. So uh, for those of you, I guess, who are kind of unaware maybe of what came before or just as a reminder this is the live stream for the newest ben solo story from charles soul so uh this started about uh, april 17th which was really crazy to look back at the the gofundme dates it's been a little bit since you know since that all happened <laughs> it feels like it was perhaps 10 years ago but it was only like two months ago it's been a while it's yeah. it's been a long year yeah it's it's pretty nuts but it was such a such a great week we did uh two gofundmes so the first uh, they were both for the creators for comics i believe it was and uh the first started out with the ben solo story from charles soul then there was a second gofundme for what the force to have an interview with charles soul so the interview has already come out uh it's actually in the description of this uh, of this live stream and here we are finally uh with to do the actual story from from charles soul and uh, all of that, all those donations benefited the, the Book Industry Charitable Foundation. We raised over $15,000, which uh, if you ask me, the Ben Solo fandom and the Raylo fandom just is the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> so we just love fundraising money, Sarah. Yeah, and it all went to uh, indie bookstores and small comic book shops that have been struggling during the pandemic. So definitely a great cause because... We love reading in this house. Um, here's my bookshelf. So um, it's definitely was really exciting to see these fundraisers exceed all expectations and to get to be able to get this non-canon story with some beautiful art by Will Sliney and uh, to get to share it all with you today and to yeah. have it forevermore. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So how today's stream is going to work. We have the story in front of us. Uh, we're looking at it. It's great. The story is called The First Lesson. So again, it's written by Charles Soule, contains three new illustrations by Will Sliney. So they both did the Rise of Kylo Ren comic series. So you might be familiar with some of that art and some of the writing. And uh, this is a non-canon story. So that's, you know, that's something to keep in mind. This isn't uh, a part of the canon. It's really almost like Charles's version of fan fiction in a way. But in my opinion and i'd like to see maybe what you think sarah i think this is as as good as any head canon you might get uh so this is my head canon it's not canon but it's it's pretty heartwarming and great yeah uh it's definitely i think really lovely um and it made me smile so i hope it makes all of you smile and yeah you know the important the great thing about fan fiction or head canon is that if you love it keep it and cherish it and hold it close to your heart. And if it's not for you, it's not for you. And that's okay. And, uh, you know, you don't have to think about it ever again and keep living your, your lovely life. So uh, that's the kind of beauty of it all. And um, I hope that everybody will love this as much as I do. It's very sweet. Yeah. So it um, looks like some people are talking about the volume. So I just want to make sure that that is okay. Cool. Awesome. So we just want to make sure that's all good. So it looks like that is the case. Um, do you have any thoughts, Sarah, before we get started with this thing? I mean, my thoughts are just enjoy it. Um, and just a reminder, you know, we are not the only way that you will get this story once the stream is over. Uh, you will be able to read this story. Um, so, you know, if you're like, oh, their voices are just the worst, you know, you can read it on your own and <laughs> take your own time with it. So forgive us. We're not professionals. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I... I I can't say I didn't think about trying to reach out to Adam Driver to get him to uh, do an audiobook for this, but um, lo and behold, I don't have his phone number. Uh, if I did, he'd probably block me because I'd be, you know, texting him uh, all the time. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I couldn't get that done for you, folks. So I'm sorry I tried. Uh, and by I tried, I mean I thought about it. But uh, yeah, so we're going to read the story. Uh, we're going to be alternating as we read it. Afterwards, we're going to have a after chat where we'll just kind of talk through it with uh, Marie Claire from What the Force. She'll be joining us. So we'll have a, th a three person chat there. And then we also put out a Google form link the other day and asked you all, if you were to come to Ben Solo's birthday party, what would you bring him as a gift? So we got a ton of responses. We're gonna be reading some of those. They are, uh, there are some good ones. 
So we're gonna make this as fun as possible and I'm, I'm super excited. All right. Do you wanna, are we good? Are we on the PowerPoint? Coolio. Do you wanna read the disclaimer, Brad? Yes. So I'm gonna put this out here as a disclaimer. This is from, uh, from Charles. The story was written as a fun exercise to benefit the book industry charitable foundation during the national closures of bookshops and comic book stores during COVID-19 pandemic that commenced in 2020. It is a work of fan fiction featuring characters from the Star Wars universe owned in all respects by the Walt Disney Corporation. Neither I or nor Will Sliney, the creator of the artwork connected to the story, claim any ownership over any of the characters depicted here or the Star Wars galaxy in any way whatsoever. Furthermore, the story is entirely of my own invention and is not considered to be canon or official in any way or discussed with or authorized by Lucasfilm or Disney. This, as noted above, was written for entertainment, for fun, and to try to help out a good cause. Neither I nor Will will profit in any way from the creation of the story or intend to. We both love the Star Wars universe and are thankful to George Lucas and all of the other brilliant creators who have made Star Wars what it is today. Too long, don't read. This is a really... Uh, this is not a real story from Star Wars. It's just something Will and I did for charity and don't take it too seriously. Let's have a good time. Without Ooh. further ado, The First Lesson by Charles Soule. Chandrilla, Hana City, 13 ABY. Ben felt the hands close around him, huge, each nearly as large as his head. His feet left the ground and then he was thrown high into the air. It all happened fast, so fast. For a moment, he was flying, his arms spread to either side, up and up, and then the briefest pause, a tiny moment, like the time had been sliced so thin you could see right through it. And then he was no longer flying, but falling, back down to the ground, back to earth. Then the hands again, and Ben was enveloped in the soft fur of his uncle, swallowed up in warmth and love and safety. Ben laughed. Stop throwing, me, stop throwing the kid around, Chewy, came his father's voice, that raspy growl that sounded like no one else. If you drop him, Leia will murder both of us. Chewbacca said something in response. Ben didn't understand much Shriwook yet, only a few words, but the tone conveyed a sense of faux outrage at the idea that his uncle would ever allow Ben to come to harm of any kind. Yeah, yeah, his father said as Chewbacca set him down. Anyway, it's almost dinner. Ben, go wash up. Ben felt his uncle's massive hand pat him on the head once, then twice, and then Chewbacca wandered off to where his father was sitting in the living room talking to his other uncle, Lando. Hey, leave the little starfighter alone, Han, Lando said. It's his birthday, and it's not like you've got the cleanest hands in the galaxy either. Yeah, Dad, Ben said. Why don't you go wash up? His father laughed. A good sound. Ben's dad always sounded grouchy, but the secret was that he wasn't really grouchy, at least most of the time. Because I'm a grown-up and you're a kid, now scoot, he said, talking business with your Uncle Lando here. He's right, Ben, Lando said. Sooner, or, sooner you get your act in gear, sooner we can all eat, which means the sooner you'll get your presents. Ben felt another presence enter the room, and he knew his mother was there. He didn't even have to look and she didn't have to say anything. He always knew, and so did she. We're well, we're waiting on one more guest, she said, but he should be here any, a chime from the front door. Go see who it is, Ben, his mother said, a smile in her voice. Ben ran to the front door and threw it open. He already knew who it was though. He could always sense his mother and he could always sense this person too, even though he didn't get to see him very often. His stomach started to go all upside down. There's no way he really came, Ben thought, but he had. Waiting on the front step of their home was Ben's other uncle, Luke Skywalker, the Jedi Master. Ben, Luke said and smiled, his face and his spirit glowing with happiness. Happy birthday. I missed you. His mother swept past him and embraced his uncle. Luke, she said. I wasn't sure you'd make it. Hi, Leia, Luke answered. Of course I made it. Had to step away from a pretty promising lead on a High Republic temple rune, but it's been there for centuries. It's not going anywhere. Well, you little man. Here he went down on his haunches and looked Ben right in the eyes. Are getting bigger every day. Eight years old. Hard to believe. I used to change your diaper. 
Yeah, like twice, Leia said. You're worse than Han. No one's worse than me, his father said, stepping up and giving Luke a hug of his own. Nice to see you, pal. It means a lot that you came. Wouldn't miss it for anything, Luke said. All right, now can we, we can get dinner going, his mother announced. Everyone, come into the dining room and sit down. Luke, put your saber on the rack. No weapons at the table. You got it, Leia, Luke said. He winked at Ben, then unhooked a gleaming silver and gold cylinder from its hook on his belt and hogging on a rack near the front door. Lightsaber, Ben thought, the word echoing through his mind. He had seen his uncle's weapon before, though he had never seen it lit. He'd heard the stories, though, about the battle between Skywalker and Vader before Emperor Palpatine and the Death Star, the one that had ended the great war that both his parents had fought in and thought about sometimes. You knew it was happening because their eyes went far away. This was the lightsaber from that fight. This was it. Now, Ben Solo, his father yelled from the, the, the dining room. Not really grumpy, but maybe on the edge of starting to be. And Ben turned and ran to be with his family. His mother and his father and his three uncles, all of who loved him very much. There were other people they could have invited, and he was going to have a party with some of his friends from school in a few days. But this was what he had asked for from his parents for the actual day, his family. Dinner was delicious, all of his favorite things. Chewbacca ate everything, or it seemed like it. And Lando had a lot of grown-up drinks. And his mom talked with Luke about his search for what was left of the Jedi, and his father wasn't grouchy at all. It was just laughter and jokes. And then there was cake. And then there were presents. Chewbacca gave him a beautiful wood carving, a little statue of a Wookiee holding up a human kid above his head, with the kid's arms out to either side, and Ben realized it was them, the two of them, what they loved to do. Lando gave him a deck of Sabacc cards, very flashy, with gold edges on the cards, and he promised he'd teach him how to play and win every time, which got a laugh and a knowing look from his father. His father and mother promised him that they would all go away together for a real trip, the three of them, no work or anything, no running into old friends like his dad always seemed to do, a lot of whom didn't seem to be too friendly to Ben. That was a perfect present, and he thought it was the best, and then he got his last one. Luke Skywalker reached into his tunic and pulled out a little metal box, which he handed to Ben. It felt strange to him. There was something special inside. Open it, his uncle said. Ben did and saw a rock. A little bit see-through, with sharp edges and flat parts and some kind of light inside, maybe? That's called a kyber crystal, Ben, Luke said. It's very special. Every lightsaber has one inside, and they're all very connected to the Force. They're almost a little bit alive. Can you feel it? Ben thought, yes. Maybe he could. There was something in the rock, and he could sense it, almost like how he knew, or almost how he always knew when his mother was around. And he thought, maybe the rock could feel him too. It was strange, but not bad. This was a good thing. I think so, he said. Well, it's not something that happens all at once, and the Jedi usually pick their own kyber crystals that they feel a strong connection to. This is just for you to see what it feels like, just for fun. Easy there, Skywalker, his father said. Don't Jedi him up just yet. My kid's going to be a scoundrel when he grows up, just like his old man. Can't I be both, Ben said, and everyone laughed. And then all the adults started to talk about grown-up things, first telling stories about the things they'd all done together before Ben was born, and it got sort of boring. Luke sensed that and turned to Ben, smiling. I'm sorry, kiddo. I'm sure this isn't that interesting, and on your birthday, too. Let me talk to your mom and dad for just a few minutes, and then I can show you some cool Jedi tricks, okay? Is this about the school? His father asked. I think it's time, Han, Luke said, or at least it's time to start talking about it seriously. I'm ready, and there are people help out there who need our help. Instruction. Ben kind of knew they were talking about him but he also knew they didn't want him around. So he got up from the table, the kyber crystal gripped in his hand. He walked out of the dining room, then looked back at the table. The grown-ups were all talking very seriously about something 
very serious. No one was paying any attention to him, and so he slipped into the corridor leading to the front entrance. The lightsaber. Ben held up his kyber crystal, then looked at the weapon again. The hook it was hanging on was too high for him to reach. That was the point. But he also knew that maybe he could reach it anyway. He reached out his empty hand toward the saber and gripped the kyber crystal hard in his other hand. So hard it hurt a little. The lightsaber moved. Not a lot. But he thought maybe if he could get it off the hook, then it would fall and he could catch it. And then he could. Well, he didn't know. But how could he not at least touch it? This was the lightsaber, the weapon of a Jedi Knight. He had to try. Maybe he could even figure out how to light it up. He closed his eyes, stretched out his hand, and tried. He really did. He knew he could do it. He knew he could bend, came his uncle's voice, kind and quiet. I understand what you're trying to do, but lightsabers are dangerous if you don't know how to use them. You should have asked me if you wanted to take a closer look. Ben opened his eyes, and there was Luke Skywalker, not angry, maybe a little worried, but that was all. Are you going to tell, Ben said. Nah, Luke said, smiling. I get it. Lightsabers are pretty fascinating things. You just have to promise me never again unless I'm with you, right? Right, Ben said. Good, Luke said. He reached up, and the lightsaber floated down off the hook and into his outstretched hand. Step back a little, Luke said, and Ben did. And then, where there was nothing, suddenly there was something. A long, humming line of bright green light extending from the saber hilt and filling the air between Ben and his uncle. Put your hand on mine, Luke said, and Ben did, and they were holding the lightsaber together. Luke swung the blade a little, just let it hiss through the air, and Ben was amazed. It felt like nothing like the blade had no weight at all. Nothing, but Ben knew all the stories. It felt like nothing, but with a lightsaber, you could do anything. Happy birthday, Ben, his uncle said. May the force be with you. End. Yay! That is the story. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody, really hope you enjoyed that story. Uh, you know, it was uh, it was unexpected that we were going to get a little Ben Solo birthday party. But appropriately enough, uh, Ben got to spend some time with his whole family together. And uh, it was very heartwarming. Sarah, where, where are you at besides uh, internal? You know, I think I'm doing a pretty good job of pulling back the tears. Um, some people in the chat seems like aren't. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> crying. Uh, but where, where are you at with the story? I, it was just so heartwarming for me. I'm really glad that we got to read it aloud and just seeing the chat and just seeing everybody seem very receptive to it is making me very happy because I feel validated in my joy, seeing other people's joy. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's so yeah. sweet. And I love the first moment of the story when, um, it's Chewbacca and Ben and they're just playing and it's so sweet and so innocent. And uh, it, it goes back to um, the wood carving that he gets. And it kind of goes back mm. to, um, if you go to the Rise of Skywalker novelization by Ray Carson, there is a scene in there with a hollow and uh, just the, just the best. Yeah. As soon as I read that in that novelization, I had never wanted something more desperately in the movie than at that moment. And uh Charles definitely satisfied that requirement. And like I said, you know, this is non-canon, but uh, the canon, non-canon conversation is, is an interesting one, right? Because I know canon is a very set of standards that, you know, all the laws within the, the Star Wars universe are supposed to abide by. However, I think there is some room for interpretation. There is some room for headcanon. There's no harm in having your headcanon. There's no harm in choosing something to be a part of your star wars right so we each have our own version of star wars and if you want this to be a part of your star wars go ahead make that a part of your star wars fantastic if you don't want it to be a part of your star wars it doesn't have to be 
but that's kind of the wonderful thing with these sorts of stories or even things like fan fiction when uh, it kind of it kind of elaborates on the stories that have come before or those moments or fleshes them out more uh, you can really craft and cater star wars to whatever you need it to be for your enjoyment uh and for for your bliss yeah marie claire what did you think um also welcome to the, <laughs> the stream marie claire i was um, like you guys you guys had to read it like i would have i was like reacting in the background like yay <laughs> oh my god that's so sweet um okay so <laughs> I feel like I've had like a very unique uh, insight into Charles Soule's working process. And, and this is kind of what I was talking about in my discussion with Ty Black after the interview is that like he really does understand Ben and his perspective and his experience with Star Wars is so different. Um, but that's OK. And like that's where I've always kind of been like. You know, just because people have different perspectives and different, um, you know, understanding of the world doesn't necessarily mean that they can't connect with us on a human level and on a and an emotional level. Pulling in a little starfighter from Last Shot like broke me when I read it. When you guys gave me the sneak peek, I I was like, oh my god, he gets it, he gets it. Um, like and and I think that this was very much the right setting because. Um, you know, non-canon, et cetera, but it shows at least from Charles's perspective that he very much viewed Ben to have been loved and there was just so much going against him, like, you know, and, and that, like, his family loved him as much as we love him and that makes me feel nice. Yeah, I, I definitely agree and... It was so great. I think how we talked about all of his uncles. Um, like yeah. this is a story that's <laughs> clearly written from Ben's point of view. Uh, and I love how he talks about all his uncles. And also when Luke uh, and Han are fighting about whether he's going to grow up to be a Jedi or a scoundrel. Why and, you know, as much as I have a tough conversation with myself about the rise of Skywalker, I think we can argue that in the end, um, in the very end, he was a Jedi and a scoundrel yeah. all at the same time. And yeah. so like that made me really smile when I read it the first time and, you know, reading it again today uh, because because we, we can be we can be at all over time. And uh, there's just a lot of care, I think, in the story and attention to all the all the pieces of Ben Solo. And so. I think Charles loves Ben Solo. Like that comes through. Like, Absolutely. He like it's almost like he loves him like a kid. Like and and that comes through in the story. And I and I got that impression when I spoke with him too. So, um, you know, certainly I I I do want to reiterate that that like he he put a lot of care and attention into the rise of the rise of Kylo Ren comic and this non canon story like hits on all of the emotional beats that we always talked about when we talk about like the Ben Rolo um you know ball cartoon like it hits on all of those beats so there's a certain consistency I think across Lucasfilm with how they maybe view baby Ben especially which is nice mm -hmm. yeah the thing this this story is so layered in, in so many ways and I want to go back to the discussion on you know him asking can't i be both a, a jedi and a scoundrel and there's always kind of i've always seen the character of ben solo as somebody that really feels the weight of a prior generation so i think that's why this story really does feel uh, somewhat appropriate to really show us that ben did have a childhood before a jedi training he did have a life where he could imagine himself to be to be anything and he, you know he thinks those old stories are getting kind of boring so it does make you wonder, did he ever really want to be a Jedi or did he kind of want to carve his own path? And maybe the resulting pressures of, uh, you know, Luke wanting to take him to the Academy, which is very much hinted at here. It makes you think, is this his last birthday with his whole family as a single mm. unit? Is this the last time, you know, Lando's going to make, every one of these people are going to be able to make it to this party, right? Because I know growing up when you're a kid, right, you, you have your birthday party or you have your holidays with your family, you always wonder which family members are going to show up and not every year is you know your your grandpa going to show up your uncle going to show up your aunt going to show up mm -hmm. it's not always it's not always like that but for this moment for them all to be there really shows that like you said uh, Marie Claire he is loved he mm -hmm. did have a childhood he 
did have those moments where he could just be thrown into the air by Chewbacca and really there's nothing else in the world that mattered, but you know, him being in the hands of his uncle, uncle Chewie. And uh, it makes you just really appreciative of, uh, of the character and really that, you know, it wasn't always just manipulation by Snoke. There was, there was a Ben Solo um, before that, that fall from grace. And it's, it's just so heartwarming. Yeah. Yeah. Can we also take a moment to appreciate the beautiful art by Will Sliney, the oh, yeah. three new pieces that we got in here. Um, they're so sweet and I love how they're all, uh, you know, circular. I'm um, actually going to but... switch to that right now. So you, they can yeah, see, please. we can go through, cause I think that that would be a really good thing to, to focus on. So um, we've got the first picture up on screen is of uh, Ben being thrown up in the air. Yeah. Uh, this is just an image that I think is so sweet. And it was like the first thing that I saw when I opened up the document and um Again, going back to that moment in the rise of, uh, not the rise of Skywalker novelization. Oh, there's so many rises. Um, yeah, there's a and, lot of rises. <laughs> yeah, and uh, just that when I read that moment, um, I was one of the people at like C2E2 that, you know, had the book and we were sitting on the convention floor. And I just remember us sobbing um, when we read that moment to see that kind of reiterated in this story and to see a, a piece of art from that is just... Um, so sweet and so beautiful and it makes me so happy so absolutely I like this is what it's so funny because this is something that we wanted from the rise of Skywalker was interaction with him and Chewie where it wasn't you know some sort of weird torture scene we wanted like interaction with him and Londo we wanted um and I'm actually just going to switch to the next one with you know Han and Leia and the Kyber Crystal and Lando in the background like we wanted him to have these interpersonal connections with the people that knew him before and to like help awaken those pieces and we did get that with Han eventually but mm -hmm. it just like we wanted like many people wanted interactions with him and his uncles you know and to have that like healed and this feels very healing oddly <laughs> Just to like have these interactions built out in the story. Yeah. And real quick here. So Tommy Stella, who is Charles's assistant, big shout out to Tommy for, for working with me to get this story all, all set and done and, and, uh, and, and sent to me and we can set up this event. So thank you so much, uh, Tommy. Tommy has a message uh, from Charles. And so Charles wants to pass along this message. Will and I are really glad you enjoyed. This was a lot of fun to make and for such a good cause. You guys all came together to support the arts in a truly special way, and we were thrilled to be a part of it. Thank you, and may the force be with you. Oh, Tommy is so, so sweet for passing that thank on. You, yes, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Tommy. And um, Charles, if you're listening somewhere out in the universe, thank you for this wonderful story. Yeah. It, it, yeah. And to Will for his beautiful art. Uh, Absolutely. I'm, I'm very grateful, you know, it really brought some joy into my week, uh, you know, and especially when everything just seems so big and so tough, uh, an obstacle to overcome. This was definitely has been a bright spot for me. I'm so glad we get to keep this, you know, like for yeah. ourselves. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually going to move on to the next um, next piece of artwork just so that people can actually see it. So that's uh, Luke and Ben together with the lightsaber. Yeah. So, uh, Marie Claire, I want to go off something you had kind of mentioned where uh, some of your hopes with the Rise of Skywalker were that Ben could kind of connect to those those parts of his past. And I, I do want to bring up something that that Charles wrote in here that is so it's so quick and so subtle, yet has so much weight to it. Mm -hmm. It's on the, the very first page where he talks about feeling the presence of his mother. And it says he didn't even have to look and she didn't have to say anything. He always knew. And so did she. So this when I first read this, I thought of Bloodline, I believe it is, when we have, there's a specific moment in that book where uh, Leia feels Ben, uh, you know, like within the womb and she mm -hmm. feels his his light, you know, and she knows that he's there. Aftermath. Uh, aftermath, mm -hmm. yeah, um, Empire's End. And it's just such a special moment and it, it's, uh, it's elaborated on later where I think Han's telling Leia, you know, you have a connection with Ben that I never will. Mm -hmm. And Leia tries explaining to him, yeah, but you know, you're his father. You're, you're still so important to him, even if we have something that you'll never necessarily have. And uh, I, I thought that was a good ode to that. And also uh, a, a nod even to the rise of Skywalker, right? Because Ben doesn't necessarily have to see 
Leia when he's on the Death Star fighting Rey, but she just kind of hears his name in the distance. You see him turn his head, and he knows that hits his mother. He senses that presence, even though she doesn't have to be in the room, like this, like this passage says. And I thought that was a really beautiful connection because Leia was so important in, in Ben's redemption. All he needed to hear was that his mother did want him to come home. Um, you know, Han tried telling him that in The Force Awakens, but I don't think Ben believed it. So once Ben actually hears his mother crying out for him to come home, that's when he realizes, you know, I've always been loved. They still love me no matter the things that I've done. And uh, it, mm-hmm. it kind of just got me so much in the feels uh, when I read this. Uh, it's, it's really beautiful, the relationship between the two of them. I, I personally, the art that's on the screen with the Luke and, and Ben, I like that it's the green lightsaber. I hope that people, when yeah. they get the PDF, they actually colorize these, like some artists out there, <laughs> like use them as like coloring pages because it's totally possible to do that. And I would love to see that green um, just because like we didn't ever really get to see the green lightsaber in the sequel trilogy. And I think it it's just, it's beautiful. <laughs> Will's art is Absolutely. just so gorgeous. And we'll, we'll be posting the story soon on, on Twitter here shortly um, with a, a shareable Google Drive link. So that'll give you all access to the story and you can read it over and over and over again. You can you can print it out if you like and keep it on your bookshelf, whatever you want to do with it. Um, you know, obviously just, you know, respect the respect the story and all that. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm just glad this is out in the world. I'm glad we got to, to share it with you. Um, there were a couple of other details in here that I, I really enjoyed. There was uh, on page four uh, when Lando gives Ben a, a Sabacc card deck for his birthday. He's, it says he promised he'd teach him how to play and win every time, which got a laugh and a knowing look from his father. So as a huge solo fan, uh, that was a great little callback to me thinking of, you know, Lando's just going to teach Ben how to cheat at Sabacc is what that's telling me. You know, he's going to he's gonna tell him where to hide the green Cylon and uh, maybe even fool his father again if his, if his dad, if uh, Han... Uh, like bring him up with the book. card thing that he had yeah. during. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's just little tiny details like that that really make the the story feel so cohesive and make this whole family feel like one one co- connected unit. And mm-hmm. it is such a powerful family. I mean, a, a mother, a, a father, and three uncles. Like that, you know, that's that's the best family right there <laughs> for Ben Solo. And one of them's a Wookie. I mean, come on. <laughs> I love how he, um, there's a moment in there when it says he doesn't know much Sri Wakiak yet, so he doesn't know <laughs> quite what Chewbacca is saying at any point in time, um, <laughs> but he can kind of gl- glean from the tone of it. Um, I thought that was really cute, too. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Marie Claire, were there anything, uh, any little details in there that you really enjoyed besides um, what we might have mentioned so far besides that? There was something that, um, actually that called back to the interview that I had with Charles Soule that um, made me made my my wheels churn a little bit which was um, the conversation of the adults um, that was happening around Ben and Ben knew they didn't want him involved but that they were talking about him and like Charles and I had had this little bit of a discussion about how you know Ben probably knew on like a very base level there was some sort of family secrets around him being you know a force user and the grandson of Darth Vader just like Luke and Leia were the children of Darth Vader like that was probably something that he was like aware of because they probably talked about it but didn't talk about it you know around him and kids like pick up on so much like Mm -hmm. you know so I'm guessing that Ben was probably quite used to these sorts of conversations happening around him and that he was, you know, a had the force, but also was just a kid that understood when people were say, I don't know, having those conversations about like, Oh, he's got the force and, you know, obvious concerns were always there. It, it just, it was a nice little detail. Yeah, it makes you wonder too if that kind of feeds into to Ben's vulnerabilities as a kid. You know, if if he sees them talking about him, knowing he he's not supposed to be involved in the conversation, um, and eventually gets shipped off to school without any sort of knowledge of of why this is happening. Like, why do my parents uh, want to get rid of me? And mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, it's it's tragic in some ways. You know, it's it, he really is loved, 
Um, but as a kid, you know, that can, uh, depending on your environments or, um, you know, secrets, the secrets of Darth Vader, like you're saying, that can really shape, uh, sh can really shape how vulnerable you are to something like a, like the dark side. And, um, but Ben was loved ultimately. And that's, uh, that's the most beautiful thing about this, this story. Uh, one other thing I, I really liked was when Leia tells Luke to put a saber on the rack, no weapons at the table. <laughs> it just kind of made me think what a Jedi dinner looks like rather than, you know, no phones at the table. There's no lightsabers at the table, no weapons of any kind. I thought yeah, that like, was a, a funny moment. Like there is a weapons rack. In the <laughs> there is. <or> something. Yeah. <laughs> like, like and it's high enough know... that, ben, that Ben can't like get it yeah. right because yeah, like, like here's my rack of necklaces except it's like just you know some some blasters some sabers you know mm -hmm. <laughs> every everything every like iconic weapon from star wars just like on this one rack casually <laughs> in the home don't bring it to the dinner table <laughs> and another great uh nod here was how luke mentioned he had to step away from a pr pretty promising lead on a high republic temple rune so that was an interesting connection, obviously, to the upcoming High Republic stories. Yep. Charles is writing the first of which is called The Light of the Jedi. So I'm I'm sure he threw that in there on purpose as a little nod to to that. And uh, makes you wonder, you know, maybe there are some things that Luke Skywalker was exploring about the High Republic mm -hmm. uh, way back uh, way back when. So, you know, I, we'll I love it when the tapestry connects like that, like when they like manage to actually get the pieces put into novels that come out and then suddenly and you know the high republic has been brought up a fair amount actually in comics especially um so it's just nice mm -hmm. to even have it mentioned here so i, I want to hear from agree. from each of you do you feel like this was uh the kind of story that you wanted from all this obviously it is for charity and is it is is just for fun but uh is this really like ideal for for what you wanted I will say for me, I didn't really have any expectation. Um, I mean, honestly, I I didn't know when we were going to get the story, you know, and I didn't know what it was going to be about. I just knew that we were getting like 1500 words and three illustrations. And I actually didn't expect the illustrations. And I don't know why I didn't expect the illustrations and the story to be connected. But, you know, that makes a ton of sense. Um, but uh, I didn't have any ideas. So this was the most pleasant of surprises and really just delightful. And I'm glad that it was, you know, placed in his youth and um, just so lighthearted and really has the, um, the spirit of childhood throughout the story as it's being told from Ben's point of view. So it's even better than I could have probably ever expected because, you know, um, I need some good, warm, light positivity and this was it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I I, you, Mary Claire. I agree. Uh, I am a, a weird advocate slash I've been a little demanding on my own podcast. I'm like, I just want Ben Solo POV in all material. So behind the scenes, what he thinks about from his view, because I find that to be the most fascinating. I, I would like it as Kylo Ren. I would like it as Ben Solo. I would like it as baby Ben Solo. Like, because to me, it shows the endless struggle that we all go through, you know, with the dark side, with different aspects of our, um, you know, what we struggle with personally. And he is the most real character, I think, in the galaxy because he has been tempted and he is trying to move forward towards the light even though he's struggling you know and yeah i just i i've always wanted ben solo perspective and this was a fluffy version of that which was perfect <laughs> yeah i i feel like it really will satisfy a lot of people and i know i know many people don't necessarily vibe with the sort of ot nostalgia but i think I don't really think of this story as, you know, OT nostalgia just by featuring the characters. I think it still all is through the eyes of Ben. It's it's the it's the thought of his uncle actually coming to his birthday party for once. Like he's actually here and him having playtime with Chewbacca and knowing how grouchy his dad gets, even though he really does care and knowing, um, you know, how nurturing his mother Leia is. And Uncle Lando just sitting at the table, continuing to drink all these spicy things or these uh, fancy drinks. And it's like, does he ever stop drinking? I don't know. <laughs> you know but he it's 
it's just wonderful because I, I know we could have probably gotten maybe something post Tross, maybe something with Ray. But to be honest, I I this is perfect because I, I did just want a fluff piece. I did just want a little Ben Solo. What did it look like with his whole family together? What did it look like when he was loved before all the problems started to seep in, before the expectations started to pile on top of each other and before that temptation started to creep in? So I, I think this was great. And um, you know, who's to say again, maybe we'll get future canon Ben Solo stories you just never know. Um, I know Star Wars is filling in a lot of the gaps between Return of the Jedi and The Force Awakens. So who's to say we don't get another, uh, you know, family-focused piece uh, in an official book form with with the Skywalker family? But um, I want more Ben Solo. So, and I yeah. imagine he's reunited with his family. Uh, you know, even though Ben Solo didn't necessarily end up alive, he definitely went home. Home being some sort of place, other place with Han and Leia so he is home and I know with this story uh everybody seems to be quite positive about it in the comments as I read them um so I'm really glad that you guys all like it yeah. and we did ask on Twitter well Brad asked on Twitter um he asked everybody what you would get Ben Solo little Ben Solo for his birthday <laughs> and there were some really good responses so <laughs> many so many responses that like we do not have the time to read them all um but I definitely want to make sure that we highlight some of them so Brad do you have a couple yeah. that you picked out I do have a couple uh there were really great ones so Eric Eilerson who's the host of the Living Forest podcast he said he would bring a picture of Kira so he can show his dad and invoke massive chaos <laughs> Uh, that sounds like the best son prank ever. Show the old ex-girlfriend and, uh, you know, make make Leia and Han kind of go at it again. And just well, <laughs> Santa might forth. be worse because Leia knows who Santa is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. She's like, wait, there was Santa and there was Akira? And Han's like, wait, wait, I can explain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that, that was a great answer. I love that. I'm always about chaos at the dinner table. <laughs> a lot of people said um, various versions of journals, arts, and specifically calligraphy sets. So the kid is going to have to do a lot of writing, you know, if we all show up to his birthday party with callig calligraphy sets. But a lot of calligraphy sets were highlighted. And um, I think that's very thoughtful. I think it's very thoughtful. And he would enjoy that very much. So 10 out of 10 to all of you who said that. Another great response was from Luthien, who is one of the hosts on Girls with Sabres. She said, a huge hug because he needs one and some walkie-talkies because that gift has not failed me yet with four nephews. <laughs> if he's too old for walkie-talkies, then 20 bucks. It's what the cool ants do. <laughs> That's a, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. That's a comprehensive, well-rounded, understandable answer there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one that I really liked that showed up a couple of times um, from an anonymous person, um, from Riss, uh, from, I think it's like Suki underscore Suki said a hug, a really nice hug, a hug if he wants one, just a really good hug. Um, and that's really <laughs> nice too, that people love him and care for him. And, um, you know, in this time of a uh, pandemic, I don't know about you, but I'm a hugger and I've been missing hugs. So I'm, we'll be really excited when we get to hug again. <laughs> yeah. I, great... I used to say that uh, Ben Solo just needs like a hug, a blanket and like, a, <laughs> like a thing of hot chocolate or something. And somebody just to like <laughs> tell him that it's going to be okay, even though it feels yeah. like it's not. Yeah. Speaking of uh, blankets at Raylo, my halo said a blue butterfly throw blanket. <laughs> Uh, which thinking of that little Ben Solo swaddled up in a, a blue butterfly blanket really breaks my heart a lot. Because blue butterflies are grandma. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it would definitely be a gift from from Leia. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at Riri 19911, they said anti-snoke spray. That might come in handy <laughs> in a couple years. <laughs> I mean, that seems like a cure-all. I mean, I... I support it. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. It's creative and exactly what he needs. Practical too. <laughs> <laughs> a Snoke survival um, kit in general would have been yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Uh, we also have a, an answer from at Centennial Raylo, who said a get out of the world between worlds free card might come in handy. <laughs> That's pretty genius if you ask me. Again, practical. May not have a lot of uses in the moment, but it's one of those ones where it's like, you're going to need this. And and when he needs it, he'd be like, ah, oh, thank you, whoever gave this to me. You <laughs> you are literally a lifesaver. <laughs> it would definitely be Ahsoka. <laughs> yeah, she just like shows up. Like, there you hey, go. I've been here you don't, you don't know, kid, You don't know me, kid, but here. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, what <laughs> is this? <laughs> He's just showing up everywhere. I wouldn't be surprised, honestly. It's it's uh it's a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Somebody in the chat, any artists out there, please draw Ben Solo wearing a cowboy hat holding a get out of World Between Worlds free card. Like in the world between worlds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a great piece of a uh, fan art waiting to happen. And, and it and it's like meta because we know who can do it. <laughs> and it's like calling him it's like his it's it's like um i don't know harriet's magic hats or something i don't know if that's yeah. just a canadian show or not i don't remember but yeah <laughs> you you got the magic hat you can get out of the world between worlds <laughs> that's amazing and this one is also pretty good um, and it is the answer is from Rosie Crucian, 1970. Um, sorry if I'm like butchering your ads. I'm so sorry. Um, but the answer is a set of Ewok footy pajamas. Oh. And Aww. they say that they wrote their own fan comic about this, actually. Whoa. And link it to us, please. We would love to see it. Um, yeah. One, two. I'll retweet it. I think that we all need a set of Ewok footy pajamas. Footy pajamas. Are you kidding mm. me? That sounds cozy as heck. So, so great. Is it like an Ewok onesie or is it like Ewoks in different poses with footies? Because hmm. I, I would go for both, honestly. Like, yeah. You both, know. Is good. Both, both is good. I, I, want, I want like a wicked onesie now. Like, that's what I want. Get it together, licensors and vendors. Let's make this happen. You have, a, <laughs> you have like 100 people in the stream that would probably grab one. So. <laughs> well, uh, Leia and Han did promise Ben for his birthday that go on a real trip together where you know they wouldn't run into old friends of oh, Hans. Yeah. so maybe they take a summer vacation to, to endor and, and uh you know wicket gives them an airbnb for the week uh with his footy pajamas where we do you plan the solo organa family vacation uh naboo for sure yeah oh padme's you... old lake house absolutely you took the good absolutely. one <laughs> that's like the only right answer all the other answers are just yeah wrong. just like hot yeah. no, no. dad's away no <laughs> let's go to the homestead that's Corillia? a great place to have vacation <laughs> that's all. Hmm. yeah i mean we don't know of too many worlds that are like great and gorgeous and lovely and beautiful and like your vacation Can spots you canto know? bite is kind of like las vegas mm -hmm. i mean yeah that, i mean that's yeah. fair we need more naboos in the star war yeah i would like to yeah we just yeah. need more calm chill cool there's not a lot of nefarious stuff happening you know by a lake i don't know what about I mean, me too <laughs> galaxy's edge yeah I mean, doable. Taking the dock in, Gondars. In the forest. They the can forest. climb the spires. There's the cenotes. The yeah. Mm. That'd be fun. You know, only yeah. only the death temple's a little bit around there. <laughs> Where you run into the traps. <laughs> Castellan, he could go surfing. Yeah. Castellan, just saying. Star Wars Resistance fans, where you at? Yep. <laughs> Genius. Genius. Uh, what if him and Niku are the same age and they're like little buds. Oh That's my god, like Niku. Yeah. Wow. Niku. Hello. What is your name? Your name is Ben Solo? My name is Niku. <laughs> I want it. That's it. I need it. <laughs> my heart's so small. I love Niku so much. <laughs> yeah. Okay, this is not a Niku great. stream though. I need to calm down. <laughs> I know. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta roll back a little bit. And uh one other response here I, I thought is really, really appropriate because it's typically a gift you will give to people. Uh Leia Porgana said an iTunes gift card. So that, that begs the question, uh, what kind of music is little Ben Solo listening to? Like mm. Max Rebo, maybe? You got like a kid's bop album or something? Whatever the Star Wars equivalent of Drake is, because that's what my son listens to. 
<laughs> he's eight. <laughs> he's eight. Oh, man, that's so funny. <laughs> uh, I I think he would maybe enjoy some like um, show tunes. I mean, I'm in, I like mm. musicals, so maybe he would also enjoy mm. like a good. Um, not not like he's not like a golden age musicals kind of guy. He's like a let's get into the weird new musicals that are like poppy and really fun. He maybe puts those on every once in a while. He's he's into Coruscanti and opera. <laughs> Was that a deep cut? <laughs> Just a little Palpatine influence in the background. Oh, it's a little terrifying. Yeah. But yes, <laughs> some Mon Calamari like, opera. Uh, why is Ben <laughs> listening to Coruscanti and opera suddenly? Oh um, gosh. Michelle in the chat says that um, Ben is a hundred percent into Shostakovich, and that's a great <laughs> answer. Ten out of ten for Michelle. Um, <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Any Chartrin says he listens to the cure. <laughs> Tchaikovsky's I, I Ren. I love that. Yeah. He's got some good tastes for a little kid to listen to the, the cure. It's good stuff. Rush. He's into Rush. Yeah. Lincoln Park. Yeah. Be, it's like Ben Solo's teenage years in the Jedi Temple. Ben <laughs> Luke comes into his hut. We're, we got to go train Ben. He's like, not now, dad or uncle, whatever. Dad. <laughs> Listening to Lincoln Park. So there is one more answer that I would like to highlight that I think is really sweet and also is in the vein of something that has been talked about on Twitter today because the Star Wars Book Club is doing The Legends of Luke Skywalker. Oh. A couple people, yes, um, Marie Claire and I are very <laughs> excited about this um, as Legends of Luke Skywalker fans. A couple of people have said um, a book of Alderanian myths or fairy tales. Oh, that would be so cool. That'd be I awesome. Thought- that was a really I, beautiful answer. I I want that so bad. Like like something that like Brea gave to Leia would be wow so good. Mm-hmm. And then like Leia like gave it, and it's got like old calligraphy in it, and that's how he got into it. Mm. Okay, we're just head canning the hell out of this. Sorry. Wow. No, I love yeah. The that. idea of Leia <laughs> teaching Ben about Alderanian culture and the Alderanian history is really something. Yeah. Wow. I would love that. Yeah, somebody mentioned George Mann who did the Myths and Fables. I would love George Mann to write an Alderanian Myths and Fables. Give me some of that. That'd be awesome. House Organa back in the day. That and Naboo. Like, I'd be interested in both Mm. of those. Naboo specifically because it has this really interesting dichotomy of having both, you know, very light side people and dark side people coming out of the place um and i just think that there that there's a really interesting culture there that would be really interesting to highlight in what kind of myths and fables they teach their children yeah Mm -hmm. absolutely well i think at this point that'll pretty much do it for this stream as much as i want to keep talking about uh, ben solo for hours or maybe have another 1500 word story we can pull out of a hat that'd be awesome (laughs) but uh, I just want to say, you know, thank you to everybody who came out and listened to the stream. It was really cool that we got to experience this together as a sort of community event, you know, versus uh, things getting leaked online or versus getting really out of context parts of the story. I think it was just nice to have it all be together, get to experience it together and cry together because uh, it was definitely a lot of fun. And thank a huge thank you to to Charles and and Will for being so cooperative. I mean, Charles uh, went out of his way to increase the word count. This was originally supposed to be a 500 word story. So because of the fundraising efforts from so many of you, this became, uh, we got another thousand words and two more pieces of art. So this is really the, you know, we're just here to present it. Um, this is really the efforts of the entire Star Wars community. Uh, and we're we're happy we kind of get to be the conduits to present that for you. And for so such a good cause all. too. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're, the country's experiencing such a hardship right now, and to just help out the communities that we live in, there's nothing better that we can ask for, and we get some Star Wars out of it. So that's that's the added benefit. Yeah, and I and I do want to thank Charles uh, as well for my part for doing the interview. Um, it's not easy to put yourself out there, especially when uh, you don't do many podcast interviews. And I I feel like I put him through the ringer, and he was lovely and and. Uh, you know, went along with everything and and really, really, you know, was such a sport. And I Mm -hmm. 
appreciate him on so many levels because he is such a good person. Um, just we don't always see eye to eye with like Star Wars. And that's okay because we can still come together and have a beautiful piece of art created like this that we can all agree on, even if our perspectives are different. And that's what Star Wars is all about for me. Yeah, and I just want to say thank you to Marie Claire for hosting behind the scenes and making this stream run um, and also joining us for the conversation. And thanks, Brad, for putting the whole thing together and letting me to be a part of it. And thank you to Charles and Will for for taking time out of their day and their busy schedule and all of their deadlines and, you know, the things mm -hmm. that they have to do in their lives to um, write a story for charity and to really bring some joy to all of us. Um, it's really appreciated and needed and um, just very special. So mm -hmm. thanks everybody. Yeah. And as a reminder, I will be posting the story on Twitter as soon as we get off this stream. Uh, if you want to share this stream with everybody, that'd be awesome because I think this is the preferred way to hear the story and have some fun conversations um, before and after the fact. So uh, share it with everybody that you know, uh, spread the word of, of Ben Solo, some new Ben Solo content and uh, make make whatever canon you want up. Make, it, make this your headcanon moving forward because it's certainly mine. So uh, thank you all so much for tuning in with us. Make sure that you and your families are staying safe out there during the pandemic. And until next time, may the force be with you. Cheers. i